Governors of the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, have asked the Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, to return to the negotiating table with the Kaduna State government rather than flexing muscles. Uh, this is regarding the decision of the governor, Nasser El Rufai, sack of thousands of local government workers. The governors under the EGs of the Progressive Governors Forum, PGF, said Nigerians are already overstretched with many challenges, adding that at this critical point of our democratic journey, there cannot be limits to engagement between all governments and citizens. Well, joining me to discuss this is Peter Isele, former president of the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria. Thank you very much, Mr. Isele, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Great. Um, for, for those who do not understand what happened in Kaduna State, just lay an, another foundation for us because we watched the protests, we heard the issuance of an arrest warrant, <laughs> even though not by the police, but the governor declared uh, Mr. Yuba Waba wanted, of course, they wanted to arrest him. And uh, Yuba Waba did respond. But let's build up to that point, because right now a lot of people seem to be confused as to why this is all going on. Well, it's, it's a fallout from the decision of the Kaduna State government to disengage about 4,000 workers. And when you want to do that, there's a tripartite, which is employee and employer. Everybody needs to sit down and then look why you want to terminate people. And then you give reasons. If it's acceptable to the union, then it, it flows. But if not, but what the Kaduna State governor or Kaduna State government have done is to unilaterally terminate appointment and say, everybody go to hell. So, so the workers have to use the only means that they have, which is protest and strike. Well, I, I hate to, I hate to, uh, you know, sound like this, but uh, ever since I was a child, I have seen strike actions. I have seen, uh, you know, the NLC or the, you, you know, ASU or SANU. They have gone on strikes, and the most the government does is say, okay, let's negotiate. But then five years later, down the line, or sometimes a month later or six months later, you see them back on the streets, you know striking and protesting for the same thing. So could it be that strike actions have lost their touch or the powers to get the ears of those in power to listen to the plights of labor? I think, I think the difference here is that uh, democratically elected government, you expected them to act differently. But what we have now is that uh, they are not any different. Because if you hear the governor, he was talking like a sole administrator. And it's, it's Senate it was quoting, quoting miscellaneous uh, act. And those were laws that were made by the military. And then the governor is declaring the a, a, a Nigerian Labour president, president of NSC wanted. He doesn't even have such powers. So what he has done is even to add more fuel to the fire. Because right now, what has happened is that Kaduna State is completely locked down. And I think things are, things are bad. There's no, there's no power in Kaduna. There's no air, aircraft coming into Kaduna. There is nothing, absolutely nothing happening in Kaduna State at the moment. So the governor is also feeling the pitch. So that is what the union had to do. And I think he just made a mistake in the sense that he's been able to just make the entire labor movement to unite against his state. Hmm. For those who know Governor El Rufai, he's somebody who does not necessarily shift grounds easily. Uh, but, but let's talk about the PGF briefly, and then I'll come back to the civil service and, of course, the local government in Kaduna State. Um, the PGF is saying that uh, they've been following, you know, the events that have been unfolding between the NLC and the Kaduna State government, and that they have deep concerns. Um, they're saying it's not time for the labor to flex muscles, being that there's a loss on Nigeria's place. And I know that everybody who lives in Nigeria understands what we're facing. But, but the plight of the worker is also part of the problem that Nigeria is facing. So um, what does labor need to do right now? Because they're saying that you need to come to the table and negotiate. Was there no negotiation before you guys decided that you were going to hit the streets and protest? I I think what they are trying to what they are trying to do is uh, you are calling labor to come to the table. Who is making the call? So it, normally, if you want to come to the table, you say, okay, let us do status quo and everybody go back to where you were before. So the governor will say, okay, fine, the four thousand people go back to work, and then the Nigerian Labor Congress will now come to the table and then they will start having that conversation. 
If they don't do that, what the PGF would just say, it's just as if they're talking to the wind. Interesting. Um, so the governors are saying that um, both the APC and the NLC will resolve issues. So it, they're saying the government of El Rufai will resolve issues and uh, all the outstanding problems that are there. Could they maybe be speaking for Mr. El Rufai here? Because like I said, he's a man that hardly shifts grounds. And it seems like his decision is final, even though there's always room for these conversations to be had. But then there, there are certain pundits who have said that maybe Labour is, is looking for something more than just um, the fact that these people have been fired. And then that what if it, all it takes is just to have that conversation uh, because, you know, El Rufai doesn't want to be seen as the first person to break. If you say, if you say you want a general labor conference to come back to the table, and already the governor have announced that uh, no seats below grade level 14, they've all been sacked. Okay. That that came out today. So if you are talking about that, the governor is not backing down. The governor is still talking as if uh, it, it, we are in a war. So if the governor, is, as of today, is firing the nursery, so which invariably means that the governor is not shifting position. So what do you want the Nigerian Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress to come and sit down and discuss? So the PGF should, of course, call one of their own, call one of their own and say, okay, fine, we want to, we want to mediate. And in the process of mediation, then let everybody go back to, to where things were before. And one other thing we also know is that these, these governors are more like a cartel, whether you like it or not. The NLC, the NLC is not doing what they are supposed to do in Kaduna. I can assure you that the, the Kaduna was just a testing ground. Several, several states are also working to lay off workers. So these two are also sending a message to other governors to say this is what the uh, labor movement is also planning. I want to I wanna push you now. I know that you're a former TUC uh, chairman, but... Let's be realistic for a second. And this is not the first time um, the idea of, you know, um, dropping or laying off workers has come to the fore. Um, I remember a, a former, I think, former Imo State governor at the time, Rosso Zakorota, had spoken before he became the governor of um, Imo State, did say that the civil service was hemorrhaging and that, you know, it was time to look for ways to shed the weight uh, if government must be able to save more money because there are so many, um, allegedly, um, ghost workers. There are many people who are working in the civil service who need not be there. There are many redundant offices and roles that should be, you know, terminated. And, and so, yes, if this be the case and then government is trying to, you know, take off that weight in order to reduce the hemorrhaging, uh, would it not be better that you get some form of package uh, other than just be laid off and then you just keep dragging back and forth? I'm just thinking out loud here. If the government is hemorrhaging, they're unable to pay you. I know states that are still unable to pay the minimum wage. Talk, a lot, talk less of paying anything else. So wouldn't that be a better idea? I mean, I, I, I'm just asking. Wouldn't it be a better idea to work smart than to just keep working and hemorrhaging and then more and more people are looking for jobs but then, of course, there are people who have jobs, but are not doing that job. So what is Labour doing in its place to make sure that people are really doing their jobs and do really deserve their pay? If anybody is not doing his or her job, the person should be fired. I'm not, I'm with, even as president of but you and I know that. But you and I know the civil service in Nigeria is massive and it's difficult to actually play follow-up. I have worked in the civil service. I have seen this happen many times. Many people don't have jobs. They just come to work and sign the time book and, you know, they have done due diligence if we're being truthful to each other. What you're talking about is the symptom. Your attention now is on the symptom, not on the causes. Now, who employs those civil servants? Once you have a new governor, a new commissioner, he brings his brothers, he brings his sisters, he brings his cousins. It's not the labor unions that are doing that. When you say the civil service is over bloated, it's simply the governors, the commissioners, and those who are digits of the various uh, agencies of the state that are responsible for that. That's one. Number two, you are talking about ghost workers. That is an insult. You work for TV, uh, uh, Plus TV. 
do you hear about ghost workers in plus tv it's simple technology these guys don't want technology to work even the governors and everybody you are talking about they don't even encourage technology technology would would, would kill corruption but we don't want technology that's so, true so no, so, you, so, so, so are people. you blaming the government right so, so are you blaming the government for the problems that the civil service is experiencing right now you're saying that of the course, same government that course. wants to lay off staff is the reason why staff are not doing their jobs the present information that i have now will tell you the last recruitment that we're done in various agencies they are all brothers and sisters of those in power so tomorrow five years from now somebody is going to call somebody will be in power again telling us that the civil service is over bloated meanwhile they are the cause so when you're looking at all of this Every time we are always looking at the symptoms, we're not looking at the causes. So the causes here is that if you want to employ someone in the civil service, and um, let me give an example of the British civil service. They, they, they know the capacity, they know where they are lacking, they have a three-year plan. That in three years' time, four years' time, this is the, the manpower that will be required in the civil service. And then when you have, it, the, a publication is made to that effect, and you know where recruitment will be done. In Nigeria, recruitment is done every day. And that recruitment is based on man no man, brother of the governor, cousins of the governor, brother of the commissioner, and the various and the presidents everywhere. So when the civil service becomes bloated, and somebody comes and says, Oh, fine, we need to reduce civil service. Now go and investigate. How many SSA do you have in Kaduna? How many SSA do you have in Imo when Roger Sokorocha was governor? So this, this political office holder are responsible for the civil service being bloated. Another aspect we also need to look at. What who sat down? Did the governor invite the unions and look at the template for laying off? It wasn't done. The ILO convention talks about tripartite, which is government, employees, and employer sitting down to agree. I worked in an in, in, the, in an OFM for how many years? Private sector. It's only when I became TUC president that I found out that they don't keep agreement. And governors and government are the major people who don't respect agreement. Now you are laying off people. Have you prepared package for them? Where is the package for them to take home? I'll give an example of myself. I was a teenager. My own father was laid off after almost 30 years in service. For nine months, he wasn't paid. Go to the streets from Abia to Zamfara. Pensioners are not getting their money. Why? Is it ghost workers that are responsible for that? So please, when they come and when these governors come to tell us that civil services are bloated, the whole thing is hemorrhaging, tell them to bring out the list. And your workers are not supposed to be secret. These are public servants. We are supposed to question them. What governors are doing in Nigeria today is that they now, they now consider themselves to be emperors. Governors are supposed to serve the people and not the people being their servants. So what does Labour want now? Because, I mean, this cannot keep going on. Of course, um, Labour is not going to stand down. Neither is Governor El Rafai. So what does Labour need now going forward? Because there has to be a way to resolve this problem. Yes, the, the APC governors have said, um, come to the negotiating table. That's for the NLC and stop flexing muscles. But what do you want as a people right now going forward? Because, again, I ask, if the government decides that they're going to go through due process and do what the book says, in other words, they're going to prepare the packages and then come to Labour and have a tripartite agreement and say, well, we want to drop people. Is Labour going to sit back and say, well, let's drop people. Let's see who we can drop. Is that going to be an easy choice for Labour to make? It, it, let me tell you, it will be an easy choice. I'm, I'm coming from I'm from where I'm coming from. My background is that oil uh, in the in the in the petroleum sector or in the oil industry, layoffs are being done regularly. I will tell you that regularly. But the unions there have a template for layoff. So what the management does is okay, fine. The price of crude has tanked. Is going for less. We don't think we can operate at this level, and we need to lay off people. And then they bring out the redundancy package. And everybody looks at the literacy package. Sometimes you will see somebody who says, okay, I think I want to go. People will just volunteer and they want to go, collect their package, and they exit. But what you have is that government don't even have package for the workers. So government will wake up and do what they are doing. And these workers are seeing what is happening to pensioners. So what you have is that go government in our country have lost credibility. They've lost the respect of the workers. And the workers can't trust them. That's it's what is playing out here. And if that is what is playing out, we, Labour, they will always be ready to go to the table. 
But what are you bringing to the table for them to sit with you for? And if the government are not listening, Labour will turn that cardinal strike to a national strike. That is where it's going. And, and you can divide Labour in every other means, but you can't divide Labour when it comes to the issue of their losing members or their members losing job, not in accordance with due process. Well, well we can uh, just hope that um, uh, there will be a common ground in a few days and Labour will be back on the table with Governor El Rufai. Hopefully, uh, he also will shift ground. But I want to thank you, Peter Esele. Uh, he is the former Trade Union Congress uh, chairman. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, uh, that's our program for tonight. Thank you for staying with us. But before we go, let's hear what Nigerians have to say about the rift between the NLC and the Kaduna State Government. We'll be right back. The NLC should shield their sword of um, telling workers to go on, right, uh, on strike in Kaduna. And also about the Nupeng and other TUC that are also mobilizing. This is not the best time because the economy, the way the economy is now, it will not benefit both the government and even the workers. And um, I will also genuinely appeal to Governor El Rufai that there is always a lot of options on the table to, to look into rather than laying people off. So I think the federal government needs to step in here because truly, if he doesn't have the funds, there's nothing he can do to pay those people. So the federal government needs to step in. There should, there should be actually a kind of dialogue between the NLC and the state government and even the federal. If they need to be supported, they'll be supported and then they will try to you know, get new ways to generate some of their own revenues. It will also help them. What they should do is source means. They should source other means where they can get from, just like what Lagos State is doing. They have different resources, you know, revenue uh, drive. They should get a revenue drive. It's not sacking people that is the solution. They should get means of, you know, getting revenues to sustain the population. Where they are doing a lot of things in this country, all our politicians know what is going on. Instead of them to do a better something for uh, citizens of this country, they won't do it. They have their own personal interests. That's why they're doing everything like this. That's why the country was going up and down. That's why the country cannot move forward. That's what I believe. Well, thank you all for being part of the show and the conversation today. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Mary Anacle. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow.